today I'm putting a very fancy snake into a box with a heat pack and putting that box in the FedEx system so that this snake can fly to its new home. I'm including in that box a thermometer hygrometer so that we can track the temperatures all along the snake's journey inside the box because I like experiments. I'm not a professional scientist, but I am a recreational scientist. Welcome to The Green Room, I'm Bob Bledsoe, and getting all this recorded on a VHS tape is my brother Kent. Look, I'm glad there's gonna be one less python here because it lowers our chances of death, but I'm just worried about the FedEx employees. You are. Yes, snake busts out of the box, eats the pilot. FedEx plane goes down, and then a week later, you've got FedEx employees trying to recover airplane debris off the side of a mountain, and that's not even in their job description. And by the way, speaking of doing things that aren't in your job description, I had a feeling that this was somehow going to be about you, but I'm sorry, Kent, you still need to help me move and set up equipment today. Dang it. So I have this incredible little spot nose, inchy, pastel, super asphalt, possibly orange dream that is going up to my buddy Spencer in North Idaho today. I'm in Southern California where right now it is 55 degrees. That's the high for the, for the day. Tomorrow in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, it will be 56 degrees, I think, as a high. So we're adding a heat pack. And I've always wondered what the temperatures in the inside the boxes get up to realistically while it's en route. So this thermometer hygrometer is gonna record all that for us. Temps starting in Southern California where it's very chilly and temps going to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, where it's also quite chilly. Because remember, those mid 50 degrees are the highs for the day. Now, Spencer owns a coffee company called Wilder Coffee Roasters, and it's time for me to order more coffee from him anyway. So he's gonna send the thermometer hygrometer back to me in that coffee order box that obviously doesn't have a heat pack. So we'll get to see what the difference is. This video isn't sponsored by Wilder Coffee Roasters, but I am all about supporting small businesses, and I'm especially all about supporting my friends' businesses. Wilder Coffee Roasters, the coffee that if you ever run out, you just order more, and then they'll send it to you. Temps are gonna be about the same in both places over the next few days. It might get like five degrees warmer in Los Angeles, but I think it'll be a fairly close comparison. Tell you what, how about if I show you how I put a box together and ship out a snake? The shipping process is sometimes dehydrating, so this is one of the only times that I will soak a ball python. I put them in a little bit of water and leave them there for about 20 minutes so that they can get a drink if they want and just hang out for a little bit in the water. Okay, let's get this box put together. This should be helpful for people who haven't received an animal via FedEx before, that can be kind of scary. But I just wanna show a little bit of the process of what goes into packing the snakes so that they're safe and sound in there during shipping. I'm taping a copy of Spencer's shipping label to the inside of the lid, just in case something weird happens with the box and the outer label comes off. One ball put live, I put live. Let's get some holes poked in this box. I got two holes in both ends of the box. Reptiles don't breathe like mammals do and they don't require as much oxygen, but this gives plenty of airflow into the box to give them all that they need. We're gonna add some paper now to the box and we'll add more later. The heat pack, I'm using one of these. This is a Uni Heat uh, 40 hour plus heat pack. It's not a hand warmer, it's specifically for reptiles. I have one that I've already opened, so this has been going for a couple hours. I just like to get them, get them going and make sure it's working before I, before I attach them. That's more tape than I needed. Okay, now we've got some swag. I got a note for Spencer. We've got some stickers. Got a business card, which he doesn't need my business card, but it goes in every package. And then I have a clutch card. It shows their genetics and their ID and when they were born. Not when they were born, when they were hatched. Every time they ate, shed, pooped, anything of note, I have written down here so they can see the whole history of their animal. Some people love that, and I'm sure other people don't really care <laughs> because ultimately it's not, it, it doesn't matter really unless the snake had some big problems getting going or something like that. But if it's a snake like this that never had any problems, it's not that big of a deal, but it's cool to have, I think. Sometimes I put extra stuff, if I have it, in the box, 
And this is that little snake's first shed ever. I happen to be watching the sh shedding at the time and, and I watched this one come off of that snake, so I saved it, put it in a little baggie. So again, not something that everybody cares about, but some people think it's cool. Okay, let's get this little boy packed. I'm gonna put some paper towels in here because that helps just in case he wants to go to the bathroom while he's in there. I wanna weigh him. I always like to get their final weight before they leave the green room. We'll put him on the scale here. See what he's at. 133 grams. Look at you, little one. Little 133 grammar. Let me double check those little peens. I always do that. That is a boy. And then we'll put them right in there. As we do this little twisty second layer of protection. And that is a bomb proof secure snake bag. Snake goes in middle ish. Thermometer hygrometer. We're going to put it kind of on a barrier between him and that. this thing its own little pocket. Spencer snake shed, got all the stuff, live reptile thing, and then we secure the box. Now for the green room python tape. I would never use this to secure a box. It's more just because it looks cool. We got a box ready to go. It's not ready to go. I gotta put the shipping label on it. It is fully raining in Los Angeles right now. And you know, I thought the thermometer would be interesting to look at, but the hygrometer might be interesting too, to see what the humidity does inside the box. Not a huge deal, but it might be cool to see. Well, I'm gonna miss that boy. He's pretty cool. It's the next morning and Spencer and I were just notified that that little snake is not in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. It's in Memphis, Tennessee. And he's expected to get there tomorrow morning. So two day trip for that little snake. I'm not too worried about it because there's a 40 plus hour heat pack in the box and that's appropriate for Memphis weather right now too. I guess this will tell us what might happen sometimes if your snake has a two day trip. So this guy, just arrived this morning. Oh, little note. Thanks, Bob. Some stickers. It's like his first uh, pair of baby shoes. So the heat pack is pretty cool now since it's been two days. Hygrometer, thermometer, 58 degrees. It's not too bad, almost 60. So we'll send this back to Bob. Later this week, yeah, this little boy is. Bob, you do such a good job at wrapping these things. A little cool for sure. A little slow. Oh, but he's beautiful. So I'm actually gonna warm this guy up real slow. Look at this guy, my gosh. Holy smokes. You weren't kidding, Bob, he's beautiful. So I have a, a rack downstairs set up in my snake room and the rack isn't, um, turned on. Our snake room is right around 80 degrees and so I'm just going to let him chill in there for most of the day. Let him warm up nice and slow and then we'll see how he's doing tonight. Bob will uh, get this thing back to you this week. Send you some coffee. Yeah, he's beautiful. My goodness. Spencer's doing a really smart thing by warming that snake up slowly. A lot of times when you receive a snake via FedEx, it's going to be cool coming out of the box. That's normal. And you don't want to just throw them on heat tape right away because that could shock their system. So just let them warm up over the next few hours slowly. I have an idea. Let's do Kent's Corner. Hi, welcome to Kent's Corner. I'm Kent and that's the corner. I know that many of you like snakes for some reason, but I for one am glad that that little sucker is in a different state because when he was getting put in the snake bag, he was all hiss, hiss. And he looked over at me like, you got lucky this time. And then when he was in the box and the box was being sealed up, he was like, boom, boom, just crashing against the side of the box. Like, let me out of here. I'm hungry for human faces like that. None of that is true. It could have been true snakes eat faces and everything else. So that's a fact. Thank you for watching this special facts edition of Kent's Corner. All right, well, let's just get back to this time travel video. We're jumping back and forth in time like crazy right now. This is the time traveliest episode we've ever done, I think, 
because I need to acknowledge the horde of keepers. These are the people that have gone to patreon.com slash greenroompythons and signed up. Regardless of what tier you're in on Patreon, you're part of the horde of keepers. But this portion of the video that you're watching right now that just contains the Patreon scroll is being shot at six o'clock in the morning on the day that this video comes out because Past Bob neglected to do a Patreon scroll in this crazy time travel video. And future Bob, who edits my videos, didn't catch it either. It's actually, it's actually past future Bob. This is getting really confusing. Past Bob and past future Bob completely neglected to do the Patreon scroll. So me, right now, being the futurist of Bob's in the whole episode, woke up at five o'clock in the morning and went, oh my gosh, there's no Patreon scroll in today's video. So I'm doing it now. And I gotta delete the video that I've already uploaded, that's ready to launch, edit this in, and then re-upload the video. You don't need all that technical information. But I just want you to know what I'm going through because these people that are the Patreon supporters are really important to me. And I don't want to forget them. I also added any new people that have jumped in in the last couple days, so look for your names. They're kind of randomly scattered sometimes. And then, of course, our channel sponsors, Black Box Cages, Lane Labs, and Gray Family Snakes. Check out those discount codes for all three of those. Thanks so much to these channel sponsors and the Patreon supporters for keeping this channel going. While we wait for the thermometer hygrometer to come back in the coffee package, let's check on that little snake's brother and sister, uh, the only two in the clutch that I have left, and these are my two holdbacks, and let's upgrade them. Hi babes, this is Willow. This little one is Willow. I'm going to take her hides, and leave her old water bowl out, because that's very small. I'm giving her a larger one. I'm going to take both these hides that still smell like her, and not wash them, and just put them in here so that, so that there's some smell of her. Let's let her sort of check it out. What do you think, little one? These are your new digs. What do you think? So this is Dash. I'm giving him his hides. He has a toilet paper roll that he hasn't messed up yet. Willow had just messed up hers, so that got tossed. There's his hides. Let's give him this little new thing. Hey, little man. Come here, what do you think of this? What do you think of this action? You're pretty cute. These two snakes are scheduled to eat tonight, and I don't think that an upgrade of their enclosure, even though it's very different with new substrate and everything, I don't think that's gonna interrupt their feed schedule. I think they're probably both gonna still eat, but we'll see what happens tonight when I offer them food. If I remember, I'll film it and then you'll know. No problem. First night in the brand new enclosures. My order from Wilder Coffee Roasters just showed up. Let's take a look. Yes, it's the next day and I'm wearing the same shirt. I do that sometimes in my own house. Don't judge me, you're not my mother. Jean Bledsoe is. And Megan Trainer, apparently. That joke might not age well. If you're watching this video years down the road, you have to understand that there was a hit song by Megan Trainer. You know what, never mind. Okay, let's see what we got. I ordered like two things of coffee, just like this. Look what I actually got. We're gonna do this fast. The Royals Project t-shirt, really cool logo. Colombia, Peru, Ethiopia, Patagonia, and Congo. See the logo on the bottom there? Rocks glass. This is a Kento pour over. I do pour over coffees, filters, swag, stickers, right there, and this, important to the video, we have this guy right here. So we're gonna download all the information on this and see what it uh, see what it says. Spencer, I can't believe you sent me all this stuff. This is amazing. So I'm just gonna scroll through here, look at the top box where it's temperature and the right side of the box, as, as we scroll, tells the time of day. So like right now it says 4.47 p.m. on March 21st. That's probably about when I dropped the, the, the time that I dropped the box off. And let's just see what happens. So we've got a temperature minimum of 71, average of 76. That's perfectly fine. Now it drops down as the box is heading to Memphis for a delay, right? So it's spending its time in Memphis still minimum of 64 degrees. That's not bad. Average of 70. So now it's uh, March 22nd. 
Spencer picked up the snake on March 23rd at uh, about 9 a.m. Still, average of 73 in the box. That's not that's not bad. Remember, we're not trying to give the snake 90 degree temperatures in shipping. It's always going to be cooler. Uh, but pretty good for a two-day delay. Let's keep going. So 6 p.m. Let's see. It's 22nd. Okay, so now, now we're dropping even further at the very end of the trip. So this is 7. I think he picked up the snake at about 9 a.m. So let's get to that. So 9.09 a.m. on March 23rd, it looks like we got to a minimum of 54, but not for very long at all. It hit Coeur d'Alene, and Coeur d'Alene is very cold. And the heat pack was probably, at, we were probably right at the end of the heat pack life at that point. And then it spikes up because Spencer took the the box home. And then he sent me the coffee the same day. So so we've got the spike where the device was in Spencer's house, and then it and then it goes back into the mail. Now it took a couple days, so we'll just scroll through this. So let's see what happens in a couple days in the mail for this thermometer. Drops down all the way down. Now we're into the 40s. Now we're into the 30s. 36 degrees in the box at 11:30 p.m. on March 24th. The box showed up on the 27th. So wide range of temperatures, but well into the 30s. For a while, I'm guessing now when it comes up, it's probably, you know, it's 3.30 p.m. probably in California somewhere. And then, oh, it pro it was delivered probably right around here because now it spikes up because the device is now in my house. So it was probably delivered right around. Yeah, that makes sense. The 27th, right in, in yeah, right around 11 or 12, something like that is when I brought it in so interesting without the heat pack you're you're in the 30s and that is not a good temperature for a reptile obviously uh in the box when the snake was being shipped 22nd 23rd you know we dipped down into the into the 60s and even the 50s not for very long and the snake you know as you saw the snake was was cool and Kind of slow at that point, but he had been sitting in 54 degree temperature for a little bit of time. 54, 55, something like that. When Spencer picked him up. But his average during this trip, look at this. The average of 75 degrees. That's that's perfectly fine for, for a trip. Really interesting comparison of temps with a heat pack and without a heat pack. I would not want to send my snake in 30 degree interior box temps that's for sure that was a really fun experiment for me i'm glad we did that thanks again to spencer at wilder coffee roasters and the royals project for sending me that massive box of tons of coffee which was way more than i ordered and all the swag and stuff like that coffee's great by the way thanks for watching i'll see you next week